Thank you, Mike. Um, as Mike mentioned, I am here uh, not only in my role at the Institute for Local Self-Reliance uh, with our Democratic Energy Program, but also as a, I like to call myself, one of the lead rabble-rousers uh, with the Minneapolis Energy Options Campaign um, that had a lot to do with getting this started. Um, I'll, I'll provide, I think, a couple of things here. One is stepping back a little bit in history about what motivated a lot of this conversation to get started in Minneapolis and then step forward and say, now that we have this partnership, here's what we're hoping to see come of it. Um, you know, it, as a bit of background, I think what's important to understand is that while the, the official city sustainability plan, the official city climate action plan are definitely the levers uh, that we looked at using in terms of saying this is what residents and businesses in the city of Minneapolis care about, um, you know, one of the primary motivators of the Minneapolis Energy Options Campaign was to say how much money do we spend collectively as a city on these energy services and how much of that is actually leaving the city of Minneapolis. So I'll actually ask that as a question. I'm looking for a number in millions of dollars collectively, residents and businesses in the city of Minneapolis on an annual basis, what do we spend for gas and electricity services? Not all at once. I guess in the billions. Oh, come on, folks. It is the end of the conference day. I understand. It's hard. 30 million. 30 million, okay. Higher. 200 million. Higher. 400, 450 million is the answer. We're going to Thank you for the folks who are waking up. You guys must be the ones that got coffee before this session. Um, <laughs> So the, the $450 million is, you know, a lot of that money is spent actually delivering the services. Don't get me wrong, we're not talking about money that can all be done in Minneapolis. There are certainly things, maintenance of the grid system, the pipelines and, and purchasing of the fuels and whatnot, that there's money that can't necessarily be recaptured. But a lot of it is money that can be recaptured uh, within the local economy, especially as Mike mentioned when you're talking about uh, really a transformation taking place in the technology and the electricity sector allowing you to generate energy much closer to home than we ever had be have before and with much different ownership structures than we've had over the past 80 to 100 years in the electricity sector. So there was a big focus from the start on this notion of not just how do we meet energy and climate goals which are important to folks in the city of Minneapolis but also how do we look at this as an economic opportunity. Um, and so the, you know, the campaign frankly got together, it was a few people sitting on the table and saying, well, this is really interesting and we care about these big numbers, but what are we going to do about it? What are the opportunities for us to do anything about this? And we had heard about some other interesting things going on, like in Boulder, Colorado, where they're talking about municipalization. I mean, they've frankly been talking about that for a long, long time. They're going to continue to talk about it for a long, long time as ballot initiatives go by and, and legal fights go on. Um, and we said, well, we don't know that that's really the place to go. Plus, we haven't really tried anything else yet. So it seems sort of silly to be saying, well, let's go out and form our own utility. But we haven't even really talked to the ones that we've got about what we could do with working with them. Um, but we were also realistic about the fact that there's not necessarily a lot of leverage that a city has. As Mike mentioned, most of the regulatory process for energy is at the state level and the federal level. So we said, well, we probably do have to look at what's in the toolbox. And municipalization is one of the tools in the toolbox. Is there a way that we can say, that we can sort of grab hold of that lever and say, we want to th think about what the city could do if the city was running its own utilities? And that provides some leverage so that when the city sits down to have its conversations with the utilities, there's a real opportunity there to talk about what the differences could be in terms of governance structure and, and where we could go with that. Um, and the whole thing sort of snowballed in 2013. We had a city election. We had a lot of candidates talking about it, the mayoral candidates talking about it, city council candidates talking about the campaign. Uh, we had this specter of a, a ballot initiative around municipalization um, that didn't materialize. Um, I think there were a lot of really interesting reasons why it didn't. And you know, in the end, I think it led to um, something very positive, which is this first in the nation partnership uh, between a city and its utilities to explore not only you know, the two thirds of climate emissions that are the result of electricity and gas consumption that the city really didn't have any opportunity to influence before, uh, but also that $450 million in the, that's being spent in the local economy and how that could be kept more local. So now we have this thing and you know, we had a, I, one of the testifiers at the city council hearing said, you know, our job now is to figure out how this doesn't become the quarterly coffee clatch for the city folks and the utilities and how do we make sure we actually have real substantive conversations about it. And I think everybody's coming to the table interested in that. Like what are the ideas that we can generate? What are the possibilities? And I think there are sort of three key things at stake. The first one is, what do we think 
that we, what ideas can we generate that are innovative and ambitious and measurable and achievable within a short time frame? Because we've established for ourselves that this partnership can go on as long as 10 years, but we've got a check-in point of about five years, which means we really got to start ha having stuff happen within two to three years if we want to know whether or not this is working or not. Uh, for the city to evaluate whether or not this is in fact the, be in fact the best pathway for it to use uh, as, as one of the strategies that was outlined in the study that CEE performed. Um, and, and you know we're going to come to the table, the Minneapolis Energy Options or Community Power Organization is going to come to the table with some great suggestions. We hope the utilities will come with some. We're going to be challenging both the city and the utilities to put things out there. As, as Mike said, you know what can the city put on the table with its regulatory authority? Um, over local property? What can the utilities bring to bear with their, the data that they have about our local grid and the knowledge that they have about installing local solar and all those things? Um, uh, and, and so, you know, what are the ideas that we can generate? Number two is can we, can we find a way to do that and, and to set ourselves real benchmarks and, and for accomplishing these things? Can we say two years from now that we are going to make, you know, meaningful and, and substantial progress on energy efficiency by retrofitting a certain number of homes. Can we do it in a way that focuses on communities that are, have been traditionally disadvantaged, where um, folks pay a disproportionate share of their monthly income on energy, and and and, and frankly, uh, from a sort of crude economics economist perspective, where we have the greatest opportunity for benefit. If we save those folks money, they're not going to be stuffing it away in a savings account. They have other expenses. They're going to spend it again in the local economy. There's an opportunity there. Um, the same thing with local solar. You know, what can we do accomplish with community solar over the next couple of years in Minneapolis? What are going to be the opportunities to uh, get synergies between the energy savings programs for electricity and gas? Because frankly, a lot of the stuff that we can do in a home or in a business in a building uh, can affect both. And I think finally, you know, when I think about kind of what the opportunity is here, I think about how do we not only come up with these innovative policies and set ourselves very good targets for how we achieve them, but how do we then let this be part of the bigger national conversation about how do we structure a utility business model that serves the principles and goals not only of the city of Minneapolis but writ large all of the utility customers who care about things like clean energy, like saving money with conservation, and figure out how we test out new policies. So how can community power as an organization that has been you know, out here agitating for local economic development connection to energy go with Excel and center point to the Public Utilities Commission and say, we got to be honest, it's going to be pretty hard for this to be replicable if we can't find a way for them to get paid, letting us generate more energy locally that's not done by the utilities, because right now that's probably not their incentive. So I think that's really, you know, a, a, a very important key piece of this is can we make meaningful, innovative and ambitious commitments? And then can we go hand in hand to the Utilities Commission, who I think has expressed a lot of interest in this and say, what are we going to do to change the big picture to make sure that this is something that we can do that makes sense for Minneapolis, it makes sense for the state of Minnesota, but it's something that we can take to all those other cities that um, have established these ambitious local plans.